Hey guys, Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about auto-guiding and specifically a little trick. It's a very old trick actually, it's uh, several years old since that feature was released. Uh, but it can make a big difference to your guiding performance and to me it improved guiding by roughly 30%. And the good thing about this trick is that it's a simple checkbox. Well, not quite a checkbox, it's a drop-down menu and you choose a different value in there in PHD2 and it gives you better results. It's magic. Um, so what exactly is uh, is that trick and how does it work? So let's start with two sessions that I did recently. One was on the California Nebula, the other was on, in the, on the Heart Nebula and I featured both of those sessions in uh, my videos. Um, but what I've done afterwards is look at the guide logs. So after my California session, I looked at the guide logs uh, that I had using PHD2. So you can see now uh, my screen and uh, I am using a piece of software that is free and that is awesome called PHD2 Log Viewer. And this can be used to open the log files from uh, generated by PHD2. And here you can see the results of my guiding and my calibration and everything for uh, for that night where I imaged the uh, California Nebula. You can also like see the calibration. The calibration on my particular mount, the SEM60, is beautiful. I really, uh, this, I, I think I got a, an amazing sample of this mount. I really love this mount. Um, but anyway, uh, here is the actual results of the guiding pretty much throughout the night, right? So we can see the pikes there, they're when I was dithering, so this is perfectly normal and uh, unexpected. And then the rest of the guiding, as you see, like the red, uh, the red line is basically the definition axis. You can see it's very stable uh, throughout the night. And the blue axis is the uh, right ascension axis, which looks a bit less stable throughout the night. So what is happening here? So you can see um, the actual RMS, uh, our root mean square, which is overall the average deviation from zero that your guiding uh, provides. The lower the number, the better, effectively. Uh, you can see that it's uh, like 37 arcs, uh, 0 0.37 arc seconds for uh, declination. It's 0 0.61 arc seconds for uh, right ascension. Uh, so for the actual like polar tracking um, and the total is 0 0.72 arc seconds which is overall really good no no problem whatsoever with this however if you look at the actual graph you can notice that the blue line kind of seems to be following some waves you can see i'm following that with my mouse right now there's like this kind of like sinusoidal wave that's going on there so what is that that is the periodic error of your worm gear uh, so what's happening is that in most telescopes, not uh, mounts like the ZW AM5 or the Ioptron uh, HEM27 or the uh, RST135 or the Crux Traveler, all of those mounts, they use a different uh, drive mechanics. But if you're using a normal mount, yeah, there are also like really expensive mounts that use like friction drives, whatever. But if you're using a normal mount, like a Sky, I think all of the Skywatcher mounts, uh, most of the Ioptron mounts, uh, all of the Vixen mounts, uh, you'll have you'll have um, gears that are you have basically a worm and a gear and they fit together and uh, and like the worm is like rotating on itself and it's then moving the wheel. Okay, now the uh, worm itself it's uh, built to very tight tolerances, but even if there's like an um, issue on the worm of a few microns, so it's like too thick at one point by a few microns, it will actually affect the speed at which the telescope is countering the rotation of the, uh, of the Earth and thus tracking the object that you want to image. And uh, because the worm, the, that, that spot on the worm will reoccur because the worm is just like turning on its own, then that issue will appear every few minutes. Every, whatever and a few minutes is basically the period of the worm and what we're seeing here is exactly that so my auto guiding is countering that to some extent but it doesn't know in advance what is the periodic error of my system there so it reacts to it without predicting it without like knowing ahead of time like oh oh this little uh, imperfection on the worm gear is coming up so maybe i should do something about this in advance 
Rather, what auto guiding does by default is, oh, I see that my guide star is deviating away from where it should be. Let's pull back the mount to eh, pull back that guide star back into the square that I want it to be at. If we go, if we go back to my graph here, I can actually uh, confirm. So if I look at the lower portion of the, my sine wave, let's say at the middle here, uh, and what I'll do is that um, in here you see you have a T uh, time, uh, which is like in seconds, and you can see the, the middle of this sine wave here is roughly at T is X8629, 8629, and this one, roughly the middle, is 8939. So let's open the calculator. So 8931 minus, what was it again, uh, roughly? Uh, now I have it like at 8626, roughly. Okay. So minus 8. 626 six. that's 305 305 seconds doesn't sound like doesn't that sound like suspiciously like five minutes if divided if i divide that by 60 it's going to be five minutes um yeah and five minutes it's no coincidence it's actually the period of the worm in this particular mount in the sand 60. So what can we do about this? There are several solutions. One of the most uh, well-known one is periodic error correction or per permanent periodic error correction. Permanent periodic error per correction is something that's provided by the mount. You'll basically spend like several worm cycles or one worm cycle. There's tons of ways to do it. There's some specialized software that helps you do it very precisely, something called PEMPRO, for instance, which is excellent, by the way. Uh, it will measure the, per, per, uh, the periodic error over several worm circles. It will make like a, a perfect fitted graph based on that. And then it will feed the mount this graph and the mount will understand like, hey, this is my periodic error. I should uh, preemptively like change the speed at which I move, I'm moving to track the stars because of the imperfections of my worm. So that's great, but it works best if you're going to do unguided imaging, if you're not going to be uh, doing some guiding. Because what's happening if you're doing both permanent error correction and guiding at the same time is depending on the way that guiding, that the mount implements guiding pulses, it might like basically have uh, the guide scope telling the mount like, hey, you should go in this direction, whereas the permanent periodic error correction in the mount says like, hey, you have this imperfection current coming up, you should go in that direction. So you could go slower, whereas the other one is saying like, go faster. And so you have like, uh, kind of count, like basically the guiding and the permanent, per permanent periodic error correction could be fighting one another. So there is one good way to, um, to do that entirely in one system is to completely forget about the mount side permanent periodic error correction unless you're going to do unguided imaging. Uh, but if you're doing guided imaging with PHD2, you can simply uh, go inside PHD2, okay? And uh, I'm in PHD2, I can click on the brain icon because brains. <laughs> and uh, once I'm in the brain icon, there is the tab called alg algorithm. By default, the algorithm that will be selected here is um, hysteresis for the right ascension. Typically, the declination with the resist switch is good, uh, and right, asc right ascension, hysteresis works well enough, but you saw like the per periodic error from my mount was still visible in the guide graph. So if you change this hysteresis to predictive peck, which was added a few years ago in PHD2, uh, PHE2, what it will do is that it will, it will start guiding normally. Effectively, it will use the normal, almost like the default algorithm to start with. And while it's doing that, it's going to look for periodic errors. It's going to find like, hey, I'm, I'm doing more. I'm doing a lot of corrections in this direction at that time, and now I'm doing them at, in the other direction at that time. Isn't that interesting? And so PHD2 will, after one or two worm uh, periods have elapsed, it will understand like, okay, this is the periodic error correction that I need to apply. And it can be done all internally to PHD2. So that means that PHD2 will, will like, it will understand the best how to make its own like star position observations and the predictive uh, peck work together in a seamless manner. And the very, the big advantage with this as well is that it works with any mount, 
and it works with mounts that don't support permanent periodic error correction. You have some mounts that support periodic error correction, but you actually need to measure it every session because the moment you turn it off, they forget it forgets about it, which is not great. So this predictive, predictive pack is actually really good for this. And uh, by the way, if your mount has encoders, um, absolute encoders that are like super precise like you have a 10 micron mount with encoders or you have uh, uh, an astrophysics uh, mount with encoders this might not be the best for you the best for you might be one of the low pass or the Z filter algorithms but I'm not going to go there right now I really want to talk to people with <laughs> cheaper mounts even this mount is I would consider cheaper simply because you can only buy it secondhand now and uh, and it's I, I, I got it for very cheap anyway if we look at my predictive pack in PhD2 and here you can see that the period length is 295 seconds and this is because I used the predictive pack with my imaging of the heart nebula uh, a few days later and uh, this gave me this period which means that PhD2 roughly like uh, to five seconds uh, it estimated the periodic error correctly of my mount and it applied it so let's see what the actual results are in the guiding graph and here they are so that's my uh, my session on the heart nebula as before we can see the the pikes for the uh, dithering but like the periodic error like the sine wave they might be slightly visible still if you like squint <laughs> But otherwise, the RA curve looks pretty much flat, which is awesome. So you can see we used to have uh, 0.6, if I remember correctly, on RA. Now it's down to 0.37 and the total used to be 0.7. It's now down to 0.5, which is awesome. So it really does make a big difference and your uh, guiding graphs are much flatter. And I know it's likely not due to my seeing changing because the declination um, RMS was 0.37 in my last session. It's 0.35 now, so it's very, very close. And if I had poor seeing, I would see bigger figures there. So I know that the seeing on both nights is probably very similar. So this is it. Like just if you are, um, if you want to in, in enhance your guiding and you could just like open up PhD2 log viewer, look at one of your guide sessions, see if your uh, RA um, guiding exhibits some kind of like sinusoidal wave pattern. And if it does, just switch your algorithm to predictive PEC in uh, PhD2 guiding. I would say leave all of the values to default. It works, it, uh, like the default values seems, seem to work quite well for, for me and you know see how it goes the uh, full moon is upcoming right so use the period of the full moon to do this kind of test that's uh pretty much it and that's pretty much all that i wanted to mention in this video uh sorry i know the solution is very very short uh but you know me i cannot not explain the theory behind uh behind things and you know the various uh, pros and cons of different methods of dealing with the actual issue Whew. With that, thank you for holding out until the very end. If you found this useful, uh, feel free to go down below, click that like button, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And leave a comment as well if you have tips uh, and tricks further on guiding, like put them down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.